What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 29 at Bond Shape. This is going to be one of, I believe, a four or five part series. We're going to make all the pieces of a trammel and then we're going to assemble them together. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to make our base plates, then make our sliders, and then our crank arms, and then finally throw in all of our constraints and our fastened mates and things like that to where it will do kind of uh, what we see right here as you know the block slide and then the crank arm draws that ellipse shape. Here is the trammel I'm gonna be re recreating um, in on shape is that this trammel uh, has some specific dimensions to it. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do my best to recreate this uh, according to the dimensions given on the drawing file. Okay. What would I do first? First thing we're gonna do is we're hopping on to Onshape and since this is our project, we're going to actually create um, our first folder in here and we're gonna go ahead and call that Trammel. And so I click on Create Folder, type in Trammel, and there we go. So in this Trammel, we now have this Trammel, but I'm gonna recreate one and so we're gonna Create a document and we'll call this Trammel, you know, version two. Since this one's more specific and kind of what we need it to be, the first one was just me tinkering around on, on how to get the system to kind of do what I wanted it to do. Okay, so I'm gonna be following the drawing file I have uh, here for uh, this base plate. You should have recorded these or at least have the drawing file in front of you to recreate it or you can just follow step by step with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the sketch. We're gonna click on this top plane. And what we have is we have a rectangle or a square rather that is 4.25 by 4.25 inches. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the green, uh, sorry, not hit the green check mark here. We're going to actually start to add in some of our other dimensions as well. All right, right click, hit view normal two. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw my uh, rectangle over here and then draw my square over here. All right, hitting D on the keyboard, we're gonna go ahead and dimension a couple things. This distance right here is half an inch. This distance right here is half an inch. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and move this over to the side because there's gonna be a lot of dimensions uh, here soon. And then uh, this distance right here is going to be 1.75 inches, I believe. 1.75, there we go, okay. What we notice is that on the top right, all of those lines have become black. And what this means is that all of the, the lines up on this top right are fully constrained, is that everything about my sketch is good to go. On the bottom left out here, there's dimensions to be needed, and so it's denoted as a blue line. So let's go ahead and some, add some of these dimensions. So this first dimension right here, is going to be, uh, that's going to be 1.25 inches, one and a quarter, and one and a quarter. And the distance between these two are going to be 0 0.406 inches on both sides. Okay, so now we're fully constrained here. What I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and clean up some of my dimensions because as I'm gonna put in the dimensions for the holes, um, we're going to find ourselves that it's going to be a lot of a lot of things are going to be going on here in this sketch in general. Now, on my holes here on the the left and on the right down here, they they kind of go in line with one another. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of lines, and these lines instead of dimensioning each individual point, I'm going to dimension these lines. And then I can just throw on the points where they intersect. And here's what I mean by that. I know that these two points together are going to be a distance of 3.875. Let me see. Oh. Yeah, 3.875 from the bottom. And that this line to this line is going to be a distance of 2.75. So I'm actually already starting to line up where all my 
holes are going to go. That way, I'm just going to put in my points rather than doing uh, multiple dimensions per point. I'm kind of doing multiple uh, points with each dimension. So about this line right here, we're going to go ahead and, uh, oh, not that one. Then if distance between here and here is going to be, that looks like uh, 4.06 or so. 0.406 and again this one looks like it's going to be that's not quite in line there I'm going to check the video make sure no oh, I wish I had brought this piece home in any case we're just going to kind of wing it so I'm going to have 1.406 over here I believe this is where it's going to be at uh, in the long run, but I might run into some problems. We will see. All right, these lines aren't quite long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and just extend those out. And there we go. So now I've got the four points where my, my uh, four spots where my uh, dots are going to be at, my points. So instead, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit right click. And I want to turn these lines into construction lines. So right click, construction. Since I have multiple lines that need to become construction lines, I'm actually going to click all of these lines here at the same time, right click, and we turn them all into construction lines. So now let's put a point on each of these whole crosses right here. And so from there, what I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and actually I have the dimensions of these holes. So I'll, uh, I fibbed. Let's go ahead and just add a circle right here for each of them. Okay. The dimension for the this hole is going to be 0 0.230. This hole is going to be 0 0.230. 177. This is going to be 0 0.177. And this last one's going to be 0.191. Okay. No, uh -oh. there we go. I gotta fix that one. My circle's not quite on my line there. See, I noticed the problem here because as those other three circles were drawn in, this one's still blue. And so it's, something's not quite right. And if we zoom in, we see that my center of my circle isn't actually in the center of those crosshairs. So I'm going to hit coincide and constraint. The center of the circle goes on that line. And there we go. So all four of my points here are now constrained with their dimensions. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is we're going to do our other circles here as well. So what I have here is I'm going to have a circle right here. And then we got the same thing down here. We're going to do two four lines in total. Okay. And then we're going to dimension all this stuff at the same time. So this line to this line is going to be 0 0.375 and this line to this line is going to be 1.5 okay this line to this line is going to be oh actually don't have that what I do have is have the dimension of this line to the left wall and that's going to be 3.875. And then last but surely not least, for these four dots, we're going to have 2.75. OK. I believe we're looking good there now with what we have. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and draw my four circles. So I'm going to C for circle. Actually, we're going to make all these lines construction lines first. Click on all four of these lines, hit right click, make construction. Hit circle, C for circle. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to make sure I'm in the center of that. There we go. Here's one I was knowing is that when you're doing things really quickly, uh, uh, geometric constraints like to automatically popul populate and looks great. When I'm on one line, we see that the perpendicular constraint pops up next to my cursor. If I get close to both lines, we see now it's coinciding with both lines. If we're going a little too quickly, we can miss that and end up having to take longer on doing things. Okay. So the dimension of this circle is going to be 0 0.230. This one's going to be 0 0.177. This one's going to be 0 0.177. And this one's going to be 0 0.191. Okay, all four of these circles are now fully constrained because they've turned black. So the only thing I need to worry about is this loner circle up here. And so that's got a, a dimension of 0.2. And we have to also put up where is it's where is it gonna be? And it is from the side wall that looks like uh, my dimension's not given. That's unfortunate. So instead, what I'm going to do is just delete this. My dimension here to this wall, here to the bottom actually. And that's going to be 2.875. Okay. And then my dimension at top to bottom is not given. So what we're going to do then is we're just going to Pick the dimension that makes the most sense, and it looks like one inch. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's go with zero point. Let's go three quarters inch. Does that look better? That looks more like the drawing file, and I'm gonna go with that one for now. Uh, this doesn't have to be perfect, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base everything I do off of this geometry now. And so now when I hit shift extrude, it seemed a little much of doing it all at the same time, but now I just don't have to worry about anything else. Everything is gonna be based off of this geometry right here. So now I extruded that to be a quarter inch thick. What are we gonna do now is make our other plate. I'm just gonna click on sketch. We're gonna do this front plate right here. We're gonna do another rectangle, but we're gonna do a two point rectangle. Okay, and now we're going to add in some of our other geometry. And so what I know is that um, we have some other geometry that's referenced using our old sketch. And this is why I did everything in one sketch, because when I turn sketch one back on, all of my points that I used are there. And so everything I'm gonna reference, I'm gonna reference from sketch one. And what I have here is I have a hexagon on this hole Oh, let's try that again. Hexagon. So I clicked on polygon. It's going to be facing that direction. That looks okay. There we go. We got a hexagon there. Let's put another hexagon right here. We got a hexagon in this hole. Six sides. There we go. We still need to dimension the size, but we got our point placements are looking pretty good. On this hole right here, we're gonna have a circle. And then we got two more polygons to install. So I'm gonna put one right here. Okay, and then last but surely not least, we got one more polygon, and that's gonna be right in here. Oh. Six sides, there we go. And now all I need to do is add in dimensions of what is 
the dimensions of each of these hexagons and they have a side to side diameter of 0.422 okay Zero point four two two. This one has a diameter of point three seven five. Point four two two. Alrighty. Now this was quite a bit uh, on this video as far as getting this plate done, and I would say this is absolutely the most technical part and so probably the longest video. We have our sketch now done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make part one invisible. Sketch one I'm gonna make invisible and now we always see is sketch two. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're now gonna extrude. So sketch part one's gonna be invisible. Let's extrude this part. It will like to try to throw in some geometry that I don't want in there. So we're just going to select on the holes that we don't want in there as are filled back up. The thickness is a quarter inch thick. We now hit the check mark and we're looking good. The only problem we run into is that some students are going to notice part one and part two. Oh, I did want to make one mistake. Let's go back and fix that. Extrude two. I don't need this one or that hole. And that is kind of what I am looking for. We now have our part fully created. Okay, now uh, as far as if we run into any problems, we can fix those absolutely. Uh, my first problem I'm going to run into here is that uh, these plates are on the wrong spot. So they're, they're kind of, they should be flip-flopped and this plate should be on the other side. We haven't done an assembly yet, and so in that assembly, I'm able to throw these parts around. If it really gets under your skin and you want to fix it, we can flip the direction of both of our extrusions. Oh, no, that was a work. Let's try that again. There we go. Extrude two. Let's fill those back in. And there we go. Now my top plate is officially behind my back plate. Doesn't necessarily need to be that way. Um, like I said, this is the part creation rather than the assembly. So when you're doing the assembly, you can move the parts freely from each other. What we are going to do now is just rename these parts. So I'm going to rename this as top plate. And right click, rename, bottom plate. That way when I go into my assembly environment, I know what these pieces are as I'm pulling them in. Okay guys, this was a long video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, but I'm really excited for this part as what we're gonna do with it here in the future. There'll be very quickly a follow-up video to go to the next part. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start creating some of our slide pieces. Okay, good luck. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, throw them down in the comment section. These videos are awesome. If they've been helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps a whole lot more than you think. And hopefully in a few videos, we'll have our trammels completely made. Good luck, and I'll see you on the next video.